Hi, fifth grade. So today we're going to be learning about module four, lesson two. And this lesson is going to be all about um, fractions and dividing fractions. So we are starting module four now. So you're going to be moving into the next part of your learn book and the next part of your homework set book. And all of module four is about multiplying fractions and dividing fractions. And we're going to be starting with dividing fractions first, and we're going to be doing a lot of lessons on this. So if you're kind of confused about this now, that's fine. We're going to be working um, through all of these lessons, and I think you're going to do really great. So just like all the other lessons that we've done so far this year, we usually start with models to show um, what is happening behind the scenes for the division, and we're also going to be doing that today. So I'm going to be starting off with this group of four problems right here and I'm going to be showing you what these look like in a model and what is happening to them so that I get my answer and then I'll kind of show you what's going on numerically as well. So let's go ahead and get started and yes we are doing lesson two. We're not doing lesson one we're actually skipping past that lesson and if you would like to do that lesson you can also do that lesson on CERN and it's about line plots and measuring. But let's take a look at this problem right here. So if I have 2 divided by 2, you probably know by now that 2 divided by 2 is 1. But what I want to do is I want to start drawing models to show this. So if I have 2 divided by 2, so it's like I have two cookies and I want to divide them between two pieces of people, I could show that by circling both of these boxes and showing that each person got one cookie. And that one is my final answer. But now, instead of just dividing by whole numbers, we're now starting to get fractions for our answer. So let's say I have the problem 1 divided by 2. Well, now this gets a little bit different because this first number shows me that I am taking one thing, because this first number always shows me how much do I have, and the second number shows me how much I am dividing it by. Maybe that is people or pieces, however that works. So I have one piece, like a cracker or a cookie, and I'm dividing that between two people. Now, this would just be like if you are trying to share a cookie with someone else. You only have one cookie, but you need to share it. So what do you do so you can share it with that other person? Well, you probably break that cookie in half. And that's what we're going to show right here. So we break this in half. And what I just did right here is instead of having a whole now, I now have two halves. So I took that whole cookie, I took that whole cookie, I broke it in half, and now I have one half and another half, which makes two halves all together. So it's kind of like I have a half plus a half to make a whole cookie. And I can show it numerically like that. And I got this number two because I have one, two halves. But remember, you are dividing this. You're not keeping those two halves to yourself. So you're dividing that among you and somebody else. We're like between two people. So I have two halves divided by two. And two divided by two is one. But I have one half. And I can show it in word form like this. Or I can also show it as a fraction like that. Because one half in word form and numerical form look like this. So I had two halves, I divided them among two people, and I got one half, and the other person got one half. So maybe I am sharing um, this cookie, so Miss Coase got a half, and then maybe Gabby got the other half. So I got a half, and she got a half. So that is kind of how we're going to be doing these problems. And another way that we're going to be looking at these problems um, for this lesson is we're going to be looking at these division sentences as fractions as well because if you might have heard me say at some point that a fraction can also be seen as division or some of you in EDI may have seen this as well so if I have this division sentence 2 divided by 2 I can also think of it as a fraction this can be 2 this line can be a fraction line or divided by 2 so 2 divided by 2 the same way of showing it just now we're doing it vertically and that would equal one. For this problem right here, one half, I can also show this as a division problem because I or as a fraction because I have one, which is my numerator. The first number is always your numerator, and the second number is your denominator, which is half. And that also matches my answer down here. So 
basically what we're doing today is we are doing the model to show how we get that fraction right there. And um, that's going to be kind of the aim of all of our problems today. So let's take a look at the next problem. I want you to try this one along with me. So let me go ahead and erase all of this. And we're going to be doing one divided by three. Uh, normally, you can't take one and divide it into three pieces, but that is why we have fractions. So what's going to happen is, since I have this one whole, I'm going to show that as a whole. So right there is my one whole cookie. And if I think about it, I am going to be dividing this into three pieces. So I'm going to cut it into three pieces now. Now what I just did up here is I created a fraction that is the exact same thing as this division problem. So one divided by three is the same thing as one in my numerator divided by three in my denominator. And why I wrote that is because this is actually my answer. Because what I just did is I took this one whole and I transformed that one whole into three thirds. And how I did that is I have one, two, three pieces. So I cut up my model into thirds because this three told me so. And then I'm going to cut up, I'm going to count all my pieces, and there are three of them. But since this model is cut into thirds, I'm going to give it the unit of thirds. So I have one, two, three thirds divided by three. And what I just did right here is this and this are the same problem. I just am wording it and showing it a little bit differently so I can actually subtract it. Because remember, with fractions, you usually can't um, add, multiply, or things. Um, you have to have like those common units, and that's what I just created right here. So now what I have is I have 3 thirds divided by 3. So 3 divided by 3 is 1, and then I have 1. Third. So whatever that unit is, you just bring it right on over. And you're going to see this a lot in your um, problem set where it's going to say, okay, I have one divided by three. So three thirds divided by three equals what? And it's going to expect you to find this answer right here. So you take the numbers that you see. So you do three divided by three and you solve that, which is one. And then you have your unit, which is thirds. So you put that over there. Then it's also going to want you to write it in a fraction. So we have the word form right now, which is one third. And if I were to write that as a fraction, I have one. And then third means three. And that would be my final answer. Now, you might be wondering, well, why do I have this model right here? Well, this model then shows me how many pieces I got. So if I got one third, if I'm dividing it between three people, that means maybe Miss Coast got this one. Maybe Xavier got this one third, and maybe Jason got this one third. So each of us got a third of this cracker, cookie, whatever you want to call it. So let's move on to the next problem to kind of continue doing this. And for this one, we have two divided by three. And again, I can write this as a fraction. So if I have two divided by three, that two is going to be in my numerator and this three is going to be in my denominator. And yes, I can easily just do this and get my answer, but we want to know why is two thirds my answer? Like how does that make any sense? So that is why we're drawing these models right here to show you what is happening behind the scenes. So right now, I drew two models because I have the number two right here. So that means I have two things that I need to break up. And I am dividing by three. So that means I'm dividing each of my models into thirds. So to do that, I will do lines vertically to show my thirds. And what I need to do now is I need to count how many thirds do I have now so I can figure out. What did I transform this two into? So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. And remember, units are very important. So I have six what? Well, I have six thirds because I cut these models into thirds. And if you can't remember what your unit's supposed to be, 
look at that second number that you're dividing by. If it's three, then you're dividing by three. So I have six thirds divided by three. That number doesn't change. And then I have to think about, well, what is six divided by three? Well, six divided by three is two. Oh, I and I have two what? I have two thirds, so those units move over. So I have two thirds. And then when I write that as a fraction, I'll put that to my numerator. And since I have thirds, that means the number three. So I'll put that in my denominator, and my final answer is three. Now for my model, I can show that because if I have um, two of the three pieces, then that means that maybe Miss Coast got those two pieces, and then maybe Morgan got these two, and then Donnie got those two. So we divided it among three people, so we had two cookies. We divided them among three people, so Miss Coast was that first person, Morgan would be that second person, Donnie could be the third person, and each of us got two thirds of those cookies. So we didn't get a whole cookie, but we did get two thirds of that. So that is how we do these first couple of problems. So I want you to try this next problem on your own. Um, you can write this as a fraction if that helps you kind of get an idea of what your end goal is going to be. But what I want you to do is also show me your work in the model as well. So if I have three divided by two, I have to write that as a fraction. I get three halves. And when you get that three halves, you might not know how to change this improper fraction. Actually, my numerator is larger than my denominator. You might not know how to change this into a mixed number. And why we use these models is because that's going to help me figure out what that is going to look like. So I'm going to show you what that looks like right now. So I have three holes. So I'm going to create three boxes. So right now I have three holes and I am dividing them by two. So maybe it's like I have three cookies and I need to divide them by two people. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut these in half, cut each of these in half, and then I'm going to count how many halves I have right now. Remember this two means you cut it in half. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So I have six halves. And yes, I would like you to write in word form because that kind of helps you out. And then I am still dividing by two. So now I have six divided by two. And six divided by two is three halves. Remember those units move on over. And if I have three halves, then that means technically, yes, my fraction it would be three over two. But you, again, might not know what that three over two means. So what you might wanna do to help you out with that is you have this picture right here and you can count out three halves and see how many cookies or crackers would you actually get from that. So I'm gonna count, I have Miss Ghost gets one half, two halves and three halves. And when I get those three halves, I got a whole cookie here. So this whole thing is mine because I got a half plus another half, and that equals a whole. And then I have this one half over here. I didn't get the rest of this cookie. Maybe Caitlin got the rest of this cookie, but then she also got a whole over here. So that means that our answer is one whole and a half. And that right there would be my final answer. Now, if you remember how to change improper fractions into mixed numbers, you can also do that. So two goes into, we can create that whole. So since I have a denominator two, I put that there, and then I create two there. And then three minus two is one over a half, because my denominator stays the same. That two over two becomes a whole and a half, and then that could also be my final answer. So that's kind of like two different ways to do it. But I would like you to try to use those models so you kind of get an understanding of why we are getting that number up there. So let's take a look at problem three now. And again, I would like you to try these on your own. I know the models 
are very different from what you might be used to, but you got it. So right now I have four divided by two. Again, I can write this as a fraction of four over two. And again, I have an improper fraction. So let's see what that's actually supposed to look like then. So I can solve. So I'm going to draw my four boxes. So my four holes. And then since I have a number two right here, that means I'm cutting all of these in half or into two pieces. So I cut this one into half, this one, this one, and this one. And now I have to think about, well, how many halves do I now have? What does this four change into? So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight halves divided by two still. This is where it might get a little interesting. So now I have eight divided by two, which is four. But I have four halves. And this is where you will want to use the model because this model is going to help you understand the answer that you're about to get. Because if I have four halves like this, I know that four divided by two is two, right? But you might be confused right here because you're like, look, there's four models and there's eight boxes and like eight right, halves. I don't know what's going on. But if you have those four halves, that means that Ms. Coe's got this half and this half. So that's one half, two halves. Then I got a third half. And then I got four halves. So I have one, two, three, four halves. But when you look at this, your answer is actually not going to be a fraction because I got one whole cookie here. And I got one whole cookie here. And one whole plus one whole is just one plus one, which equals two. And that's why I got that answer right there. Um, also, when you're solving this problem, if you were to do it the way that we've been kind of learning how to do it, how to create a lot of holes out of that, we know that you could create a hole once. But you could also do it twice because if I were to have two halves plus two halves, that would equal that four halves, and that would just be two, because two over two is one, two over two again is one, and then that would just be one plus one, which equals two. Uh, so this problem's a little bit different, but using these models will really help you out. So just counting the boxes uh, to see how many halves you have, divide that by two, so eight divided by two, and then when you get that four halves, then you can count out, and you say, okay, if I have one, two, three, four halves, to myself, then how many holes do I create? And if there's any fractions left over, then what is that? Um, let's take a look at our very last problem now. And for this very last problem, I have five divided by two. And again, I can write this as a fraction. So five goes up to the numerator and two goes in the denominator. So I have five over two or five halves. And for this, again, since that's an improper fraction, you might not know how to solve that. So that's why we're doing this model to show what is happening. So I have one, two, three, four, and five. So I have my five halves right here. And now I need to cut all of these, or sorry, I have my five holes, and now I need to cut all these into halves. So I cut this one in half, this one, this one, this one, and this one. So now that I have all of these cut in half, what I need to do now is I have to figure out, well, what did this five holes become? Well, this, these five holes became 10 halves. So it's kind of like saying, well, I had five cookies. I broke all these cookies in half. So how many pieces do I have now? Well, I have 10 pieces of cookies, but they're like 10 halves of cookies. And I'm still doing 10 divided by 2 because maybe I broke up all these cookies um, so that me and my uh, sister could share. So I cut them all in half. And now I'm trying to figure out, well, out of these 10 halves that I now have, how many do um, me and her get? So I have 10 divided by 2, which equals 5. And I have 5 what? I have 5 halves. So now what I need to do is I need to go back and look at this problem because, again, when I write that as a fraction, I get 5 over 2. And I might not know entirely what that means, and that's fine. So that's why we use this model. 
So I know that if I got five halves, that means that means I've got one half, two halves, three halves, four halves, and five halves. Now, from the very previous problem, you know that this right here shows that I have one whole. This right here shows that I have now two holes, because I have one, two. But this right here, since I'm not filled in on this side, that means I only got half of this cooking. So I have one half, or sorry, I have one hole plus two holes. So that's two plus this half right here. And that is my final answer. I got two and a half of the five cookies that were um, divided up. And maybe somebody else got these cookies. So maybe we had George get the other two and a half cookies. Now, if I wanted to show what's going on, again, I can create those halves. So I can have, or I can create those holes. So I have two over two. But I know that that is only going to give me, um, I can go into it more. So then I'm going to do another two over two because two plus two is four. And I still have a little bit of a remainder. So then that would give me a half, which then eventually equals out to two and a half. Now, this might confuse you because this is a little bit advanced. So it might kind of confuse you. Well, how did you get two, two, um, two halves? And I'm going to show you a way to figure out what's going on right here other than also doing this. So if you are trying to solve for these mixed numbers, I'll also show you how these work as a division problem. So what I can do is since five halves is also kind of like a division problem, this fraction is also like a division problem, they both equal the same thing. What I can do is I can write it as a standard algorithm. So I have five divided by two. So just like that. And then what I need to do is just like any other division problem we've done, I need to solve. So remember you first start with dividing. So how many times can two go into five? Well, two can go into five two times and two times two is four. And now I do my subtraction step. So five minus four is one. And I'm gonna stop right there. I don't need to go into uh, trying to like add zeros to make up my arranger or anything like that. So what I am going to do is then this number right here, this number of my answer, is going to be the whole number that is out in front, just like this one right here. This number is my remainder, so that means that I have one. And this number right here is my denominator, so that will be my um, denominator for my fraction, and then this is my final answer. So there's a couple of different ways that you can solve these problems. You just need to choose the one that works for you. Now, for your problem set today, you're going to be working on number one, A through C. Remember, lesson two, not lesson one. You're working on number one, A through C. Number two, which is a word problem. And then number four, A through C. And if you need any help or small groups, we can do that in class as well. Then for your homework tonight, remember, this is lesson two, not lesson one. Um, you are also doing one, A through C. Yes, I would like to see the models and then word problem number two, and then number three, A through C. And if you need any help, you can always check back on this video. Please let me know if you need any help, and have a good time.